Hey, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. Uh, this is part eight of what are Sentinel analytic rules. Um, I will not PowerPoint you to death. We're gonna have a really quick discussion just to introduce you to the analytical rules within Microsoft Sentinel. So what are analytical rules? So Sentinel analytical rules are predefined or custom built rules to help you detect and respond to security threats. Analytical rules really uh, drive how important or how strong um, the Microsoft Sentinel tool is because you get to, once a rule is met, um, you can trigger a, a logic apps, which basically you can automate a response. You can, you can assign a rule to a certain group and have them go in and make some kind of modification. So the great thing about Microsoft Sentinel is that Microsoft provides you um, some really great tools right out of the box. So if you see on your screen right now, uh, what I want to do is really walk you through some of the great detections that Microsoft Sentinel provides to us, right? So this is a screenshot that you saw earlier in the uh, PowerPoint presentation, and this is pretty much how the analytical rules look. And then you can have your active rules, you can do your rule templates, and you can really just go through how you want to set up your rules and i'm going to go in and show you through the portal side in the next video which is i'm going to talk to you about how to configure an analytical rule but before we get to that point one of the things i want to talk about and which is really important is detections right the rule types so the first one we have is our microsoft security and the description says microsoft security templates automatically create microsoft sentinel instance from alerts generated within microsoft security solutions in real time then you have one that's called Fusion. I haven't really used that one as of yet, but this is um, something that you know is in preview. Some detections are in preview, excuse me. So some of the detections are in preview. So Microsoft Sensor uses Fusion Correlate Engine with its scalable machine learning algorithms to detect advanced multi-stage attacks by correlating many low fidelity alerts and events across multiple products into high fidelity and actionable incidents. Then you have the machine learning behavior analytics. Um, you should have your user behavior analytics turned on within your Microsoft Sentinel, but this is a great way to understand what's going on and it really just pays attention to, you know, how different um, systems are used within your organization to make sure that things aren't coming um, through like any kind of anomaly pops up. Then you have your threat intelligence, which we haven't really gone into threat intelligence yet within this um, uh, series, but you know, that is one of the next videos that are going to be coming up, which is basically is, it's threat intelligence produced by Microsoft to generate high fidelity alerts and incidents within your Microsoft threat intelligence analytic rules. Another one is anomaly. Anomaly rule templates use machine learning to detect specific types of anonymous behavior. And then you have your schedule one. This is a common one to have. So your, your schedule analytics rules are going to be run at a certain time frame. Uh, we will walk through a schedule analytics. I'm going to actually set one up for you in the next video. But this one is a very um, this one is very uh, common within organizations. And this one I like right now, which is the near real time. I like this one. It's it's in preview, but I really like it. Right. So the near real times are limited set of schedule rules designed to run once every minute in order to supply you with information as up to the minute as possible. So I think that that's very powerful and I like that Microsoft provides that to us. Okay, some quick tips to talk about when it comes to um, uh, analytic rules. So um, it says, make sure you enable all rules associated with your connected data source in order to ensure full security coverage for your environment. The most efficient way to enable analytic rules is to directly from the data connected page, which lists any related rules. Uh, you can also push rules to Microsoft Sentinel via API and PowerShell. So, you know, I was reading an article and, you know, there was people talking about, you know, what are the analytical rules that everyone should have? And it's really hard to say that because it really depends on your organization. And some individuals are saying, well, you know, hey, if you're going to have analytical rules, because when you do a data connector, they have rules already there and you can enable all rules. And they're like, well, enable all rules and then see what you don't want. And then another person said, well, no, you should actually remove the rules and disable them and then choose which rule that you want to use for your organization. You can go either way, to be honest with you. I don't like to enable all rules. I say, you know, you're going to do more ingestion. You're going to have rules you're probably not even using. And you really need to customize it to your environment. So my approach would be, understand your environment and go through each rule and then take them off right um which i'm kind of agreeing with having the rules all there um if i'm going to choose which one because 
I'm thinking of, you know, provide yourself more security and then take the layers off rather than give yourself less security and then put the layers on. I, I to me, it, that way just, it just makes me sleep a little bit better at night. Yeah, you might have some more cost ingestion, but at the same time, what's the bigger cost? If you get compromised, um, you're going to have a higher cost and then you're going to probably get hit in fines depending on, you know, the organization and, you know, the uh, compliance that you need to follow. And then now, you know, you also got to think about not only the fine you're going to pay, but then also your reputation. So those are the things that I would say, you know, come into play where I would say, okay, give me more security and then let me take a look and say, okay, well, over the last month, did I get hit with this? Can I now change this interval from being five minutes to now 10 minutes? So now it's not running as much because I'm not seeing too much things come into the organization or any threats or any alerts coming up. Some, some of those um, alerts may, you may never use. So that's something that you really need to go in and look at your organization and say, okay, does this one make sense? So another thing I want to talk to you about is access permissions for analytical rules. So let's go through this. So it says when you create an analytical rule, an access permission token is applied to the rule and saved along with it. This token ensures that the rule can access the workspace that contains the data queried by the rule. And that is access will be maintained even if the rules create a lose access workspace. So if you say, let's say, you know, you have somebody working in your organization and they are creating your analytical rules, they're going about setting things up. If they leave your organization because they get fired or they find a better opportunity or whatever the case may be, your analytical rules will still have access because there is an access token. The permissions are granted from the access token and not by the specific user, which is a great thing. But it says there is one exception to this. However, when a rule is created to access workspaces and other subscriptions or tenants, such as what happens in the case for an MSSSP, right? That's a managed service provider. Microsoft Sentinel takes extra security measures to prevent unauthorized access to customer data. For these kind of rules, the credentials of the user that created the rule are applied to the rule instead of an independent access token, so that when the user no longer has access to the other subscription or tenant, the rule stops to work. So, you know, that's something that you need to keep in mind, um, but I do like that they set things up in this manner. All right, as I said to you before, I wasn't gonna PowerPoint you to death. I just wanted to have an intro video just talking about what analytical rules and just certain things that I read through the Microsoft documentation that I said, you know what, these are key points that I feel like people should understand and know when it comes to analytical rules. So I'm gonna leave a link to the uh, in the description for the Microsoft documentation that I had up in the screen earlier. I hope the information I provided you was beneficial. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section. As always, you know my goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.